I thought, ah, oh, do you know what? I don't need this. So I messaged back and said, no, sorry, I'm not sure we can do business together. I'm not liking the attitude. He just came back and replied to me. Just got an email from him saying, I'll believe Audi over you. Thank you very much. You want me videoing, Chris? Yeah. Yeah. So just put more day in the life of a dealer stuff. Now around here, I'm beginning to get known, like I said before, as a guy that'll buy anything. So if anyone was a local garage and somebody's wanting to move on a car, they'll normally give them my details and I'll get a call or an email saying, would you buy this? Would you buy that? Would you buy the other? Now about two months ago, I'd say, I had an email from someone saying, would I buy their Audi TT? No, phone call. Would I buy their Audi TT? Wanted to get a shot of it. Gave me all the details. I looked up on the system. I said, your Audi TT is worth four grand. She went, oh, no, no, no. I've looked around. It's worth five and a half thousand. I said, well, the retail for your car is five and a half thousand. And dealers work off 1500k margin. You've told me, 1500k, 1500 pound margin. You told me it needs alloys refurbing, needs a service, and it needs an MOT. All those things need doing. So, you know, I'm always up, up front about it. That's the kind of margin we need to work off of. By the time you've done all those things, paid the VAT, as you've seen in plenty of my videos, if I'm left with £700 after all of that, and after paying for a warranty, then I'm doing all right. So I said that. So she said, I said, look, to be perfectly honest, if you want more money, set it private. You will get more money for it private. Do you think I'll get more than five and a half for it private then? I said, no, because a dealer's five and a half. That's with a warranty, with guarantees, with full prep. You, you could ask the same if you like, but I don't see anyone buying it off you for the same if you're not doing the same level of prep. So he said, oh, no, 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 can't be doing that. I need to get more money for it. So it disappeared. Well, I had an email yesterday and it was the same car. I'm well, it is the same car, but I don't think she knew that I was the dealer she was emailing after our previous conversation. Same thing, same car, wanting to sell it. And this time I get, well, I emailed her back the same thing. I said, this is the value of your car. She came out and said, I'll, I'll, I'll accept that then, no problem at all. Which immediately got alarm bells ringing for me because I'm, of course, thinking, you've seen my experience with this many, many times again. It is absolutely accepted that it's okay to dump a bad car on a dealer with no comeback whatsoever. God forbid a dealer sell you a car that the wiper blade needs changing on the back. You can sell a dealer with a completely duff engine a part exchange or just sell them the car outright with zero comeback and they, they you know it deserves a, they need, you need to stick it to the dealer so i was immediately alarm bells were ringing she says what's the process to come and get the money for the car and i said well you need to obviously i need to view the car first i said and you said it's got a full service history so i'll need to see the full service history i'll need to check the timing chain isn't rattling on the car i'll need to plug it in read the codes on it i'll need to take it for a test drive and obviously i'll need to review the bodywork and i said to her in the email i said i don't want you to have a wasted journey if any of the things that i've listed here are problems with the car it will reduce its value which i thought was fair enough so she so i said with the services i said is there a stamp and every year um because obviously that's what the full service history is so she went away and went quiet for quite a long while it was about two days and i got an email back saying so it must have been a few days ago this email actually then i got an email saying oh, it is a full service i've checked with audi it was serviced until 2015 and um it's just due a service now because i've done 5,000 miles because i wasn't using the vehicle 2016 sorry 2016 but it's um it's due a service now because I've done 5,000 miles. I said, well, sorry, that isn't a full service history. I said, even if you're not using the vehicle, it needs to be serviced annually. The TF TFSI engine, two litre petrol engine, according to Audi stuff, needs to be serviced every year, regardless of mileage. I think she'd actually had it serviced in 2021. So there's a gap between 16 and 2021. Anyway, so I said that. So she came back to me and said, well, I've checked with Audi and as far as they're concerned, that's a full service history because of the mileage. And I'd rather believe them, thank you very much. Because what I'd said to her is that I would need to knock 350 off to go and get a big service done so I could give the customer complete confidence. Like we did with the Honda that had some missing history. We just did a massive service, the gearbox oil, the diff oil, the engine oil, everything, didn't we? So that's what you do. If you've got a car with a bit of a sketchy service history, you just do a big service, cover all the bases. They're chained so it doesn't need the cam belt, but you do as big a service as you can so that someone can have some assurance that you've tried your best to make sure the car's as good as it can be. So I thought that was fair. But no, she said to me, she said, uh, so I went back again and said, 
No, sorry, there's not a car on the planet that I'm aware of that has, well, unless there's that North Star engine, isn't there, I think? Five litre North Star engine, which lunched itself, they found out in the end, didn't they? That was given thousand, was it? 100,000 miles before an oil change or something? Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure you'll, you will do it below. So I so said there's not a car I'm aware of, and certainly no TFSI engine, that has an interval of like five years without a service, regardless of what the mileage was. Regardless of what the mileage was. It's mileage or age. So she just came back and she replied to me. Just got an email from her saying, I'll believe Audi over you, thank you very much. So, <laughs> they're the joys of being a car trader. It's just assumed you're trying to rob them, isn't it? And it couldn't possibly be that you know they're making a mistake or they're misreading some information somewhere. It's that I'm trying to rob them of a car for peanuts. I really don't want the Audi TT that badly that I'm going to lie about service intervals on it, am I? So the i10's outside, ready for its pickup. I moved it outside because I'm going to put some fuel in it. I, well, obviously, once I've cleaned them, I don't want to take them down a petrol station and get them dirty again. So I tend to go out and get cans and put fuel in. I like to make sure the cars go out with at least a quarter of a tank of fuel. Um, if I can't take it to the, in there in time, I just give them cash. And when they go to the petrol station, they, they can do that on me. I just something I like to do. I like someone to get in the car and be able to go for a good drive after picking it up from me, get used to it, get comfortable with it, rather than the first trip is straight down the petrol station. I really love the story of this sale. So if you remember, we got this from a subscriber. They'd bought it from brand new, full service history. They said they'd rather I had it and bought it back to life. The deal was I wasn't allowed to trade it out to anyone. The front and rear bumpers were very lack appealed, weren't they? Other than that, I think it just needed a service and an MOT and then, you know, a bit of a polish plastics clean inside as you can see oh we refurbished all the wheel trims and we had the original wheel trims on it but they're all scuffed so we refurbished the wheel trims and now it's going out to another subscriber so well, let's get the wing mirror out so yeah so it's gone full circle it's come from a subscriber to me brought back to you know near bang on perfect condition and it's going back out the door to another subscriber and i think that's a really great thing about the community on this what is a small channel after all on youtube is when things like that happen i think it's i really like it hope you agree as well and hopefully our subscriber is um pleased that their car is going to go on to somebody else and they're getting a really good car out of this I just listed this sanyon corrado up for sale it's only done fifty-two thousand miles 64 plate it's an automatic which is super popular at the moment people in the north devon want these small automatic four by fours but i just listed it for two thousand pounds less than auto trader recommended retail why because it's got a sight slip from third to fourth in the automatic gearbox at low speeds doesn't happen at high speeds which indicates it's a solenoid being a bit sticky we have done a few full oil change on it hopefully it might come through but we've listed it like i say with it as a known fault for two thousand pound cheaper i'm afraid still no update as of yet on the sportage because we now need to get uh, probably a compression test done a lot of you have noted in the comments below about walnut blast in the inlets because the valves get coked up on these which is quite possibly the problem is we've got a couple of valves in one and two coked up and sticking there could be one of the problems but like I say with so much on at the moment we are going to get old faithful in to have a look at that Chris but not until he's had a look at the golf and see what you can find out with that because I think I've taken that about as far as I can without getting really in depth and tying up too much time when I should be prepping all this stuff got a part x in doesn't happen very often does it we do like to do part x's here i know they cause me a lot of grief a lot of the time but the advantage of part x is you get cars that you probably wouldn't think of buying normally so you get that bit of variation with this part x i was also given some free range eggs so that's a bonus <laughs> this devon for you i get I'm given you don't believe how often i actually get given eggs as part of uh as from customers who just want to do something nice for me so the citroen c3 has just gone out and this has just been part exchanged in. It is, of course, a smart car. Nice story with this one is um, father bought it to tow behind their camper van, took it all over the world, and then just used it, you know, to go round town locally. Hold on, my phone's ringing off the hook. Decent nick overall. We've got a little bit of a scuff down there, and we've got a sticker, which no doubt is probably covering a little something. But other than that, it looks pretty good. There's a little scuff down there. Yeah, seems good, all right. Other than that, the alloys are in good condition. We've got plenty of tread on the tyres. They need a good clean. The headlights need a good buff. The roof needs a good scrub, but the roof is 
complete and not full of holes or anything like that. Inside is locked. Two seconds. Now I haven't got good memories of these because the only time I've been in one was when Adrian was driving it and he drove like an absolute loon and I couldn't believe we were going to make it round the corners that we did. <laughs> so interior got leather, well part leather anyway, and then the uh, they're in good nick. There's only a tiny little bit of wear just there. All uh, clean and tidy in here, got nice fabric all over the dash. Now, of course all of these are auto aren't they? So we've got that very slow, very slow gearbox. They, um, they're very dim-witted, aren't they? Where's my, where's my keyhole for these ones? Oh, it's down here, isn't it? I forget that on these. So mileage is 86,000. Like I said, there's a load of paperwork. Oh, there's a load of paperwork, loads of um, service history on it. Like I say, all the original books. He's giving me a full tank of fuel. Bless him. I gave him half in his. Uh, right, okay, so. Start her up. A little bit slow, could probably do with a new battery. There we go, off goes the i10. And two mad dogs. <laughs> They're dogs, that is, <laughs> of course. Nice to sell another car to a subscriber and it for it to be local. Thanks very much guys for the business, much appreciated. Thanks for watching, they've been watching from the very beginning. And they said all you see is your hand, so let's give them lots of thumbs up, hands action on the go. <laughs> right now, I've got to get off because I promised my daughter, I promised my daughter that we'd pick her, I'd leave work early and then take her down to festivities in the village in a taxi with the bunting on it. So let's not let her down. I did in fact turn down a viewing on the Sanyong. They wanted to come at five o'clock and look at the Sanyong. Um, but I did say, no, sorry, I made a promise I've got to keep, but I've agreed to come in on bank holiday Monday and let them have a look then. You've got to get that right work balance, guys. So I said it's bank holiday. I only came in to really clean the taxi up, but I've sold the Sanyong. A lot of messages on this car. Obviously, I had it up for two grand less than Autotrade recommended, but it's also an automatic, so I had a lot of messages on it. But one lady rang me, um, I think I said earlier in the video, rang me, wanted to see it uh, on Saturday, but I promised to go home early in the taxi, didn't I? Take, people, take the family around in that with all the flags on. So we agreed for her to come in today, and she turned up exactly when she should. Bless her, she said to me, oh, can I get there for nine o'clock, and you'll have the rest of your bank holiday to yourself. Really, really lovely lady. And we took it for a drive and they couldn't, <laughs> couldn't tell what I was talking about at all. And to be honest, I couldn't really tell. It was changing really, really smoothly. So in the end, I took over and I kind of like forced the issue by slowing to an almost complete halt, obviously with a clear road behind me. And then um, went off and at a very slow speed just to indicate what it was doing. But in all honesty, having driven it again, you wouldn't, <laughs> you wouldn't really have noticed that sort of little slip on third gear. But yeah, no, they wanted to park exchange a Dacia that was beat up to hell. I've never seen so many damaged panels on it. So I did have to lowball them out. I said, look, at the end of the day, this would be its value if it wasn't damaged, but we've got over a grand's worth of paint here needs doing. It was 2015, so it would have been worth doing the paint. But I said, um, you know, I have to be honest. So I've get, they've gone away and they're going to make decisions as to whether they want to park exchange or not. They've left a deposit on the car. But um, we tried everything out, all the electrics. This car is bang on. I mean, in terms of everything else, it's that one thing. Everything else about this car is absolutely bang on. And um, they said, you know, you know, things like, you know, how long do you think it will last, this, that, and the other. I said, look, honest to God, I think it will go on forever and a day like it, but I can't guarantee that. It's an old car, can't guarantee any part of it. I showed them the warranty because I'm still giving a six-month warranty on it. I showed them that the warranty does actually state that, uh, from warranty-wise, that it would... Um, it covers all internal components on the gearbox or on the automatic gearbox. Now, I said to him, look, it's a known fault with the car. You'd be welcome to put a claim in if it got worse, but I couldn't guarantee it. I said, no, I'm not guaranteeing the gearbox. I said, I'm, I'm warranting everything else, but I'm not warranting the gearbox because I've given a discount to allow for that. And they seem to be cool about it. I'm going to obviously make sure that everything is it's, it's on the invoice. It's going to be on the handover form as well. I'm going to keep the advert that I put up for it and the video that I put up for it live just to cover all the bases in case there's any comeback on it at all. But I honestly don't think there will be touch wood.
turns your head, I don't think there will be. So yeah, so um, that's good to have that gone because that's been kicking around for a long, well, hopefully it hasn't gone yet. It's got to go down. I'm going to still get a service done on it because it hasn't had a service yet, oil and filter. And I want to get them to check the um, alternator bearing because that's a bit squealy. Not the alternator bearing, the um, the free the free bearing, you know what it is for the auxiliary belt. I think that might, it might be that it hasn't been driven enough. If I start it up now, it might be quiet actually. Let me just see. I've got the keys on me still. Let's do that while I'm on camera. Sometimes the cars have been sitting for a long time. They want a bit of a run to get those bearings up going again. Yeah, it's still a little bit of a chirp there, so we'll get them to check out what the chirp is. And then um, then it'll be ready to go. So yeah, let's get that video done on taxi now, but that's, that's worthwhile coming in for that. Oh, funny thing with it, just before I move it in, is that I actually did turn down a second viewing on the car from a lady who messaged me and said to me, does it have heated seats? Now in the video and in the listing, I put in the listing it's got heated seats front and rear, and in the video, I have put in there that it's got heated seats. And I said to her, have you watched the video? Now, not to be funny, but I said to her, have you watched the video? Because obviously I wanted to make sure she'd seen the thing about the third gear side of things. And the message came back and said, can you just answer the question? <laughs> At which point I thought, oh, do you know what? I don't need this. So I messaged back and said, no, sorry, I'm not sure we can do business together. I'm not liking the attitude. Um, which I normally wouldn't put something like that, but I don't know what kind of a mood I was in. And oh my goodness, I got a tirade of stuff back off that. <laughs> but it, it just confirmed i'd made completely the right decision on that you know you spend all this time writing these adverts detailing everything inside out you put a video on it and i'd actually said i she actually then came back and said, well i did watch the video but i only watched the very beginning bit so but it wasn't you know i don't have a problem with them maybe not watching the whole video or needing more information what i have a problem with is is the attitude that came back and when I asked her if she watched the video, and, and you, you need as much as anything in this game, you need to decide who it's worth sending to, selling the car to. You want me videoing, Chris? Yeah. Yeah. So the myth, the legend is here, having a look at the Golf. He's completely thrown out the window my diagnosis of boost um, because he cleared the codes, took it for a run, and quite rightly pointed out that if it was a boost leak or anything like that, as soon as he went on it again, he would have uh, got a code again since he's cleared the codes and not come back. So we think it might just be a historic code. Been doing a little bit of research on these. I mean, firstly, Chris has done all, checked all the fuel pressures are good. Um, all the, um, it looks like all the injectors are good. The fuel pressure's good. The sparks are good. He's pulled those, had a look at them, gone through all of that. He says he feels it underneath his bum more, which having done some research on these, we found there's a couple of common things that the, inner drive shafts go on them but also the engine mounts can be bad as well and that would if it's the rear the rear engine mounts can go bad and if so that would be pretty much about there so it could be something as daft as that so but we're a bit of a loss at the moment we basically ruled out anything that you can electronically monitor so we're now down to mechanical things that aren't monitored by monitored by electronics because everything on the electronics is looking bang on so it's now a case of rubber mounts, drive shafts, the wheels, obviously we know the wheels, we've done them front to back. So we know we've eliminated that by swapping them front to back. So it's an interesting one. So we've done a bit of research, Chris is off now, I'm back in the following morning, done a bit of research on these. Um, what they can do, apparently, one of these, the symptoms for this uh, can be the drive shafts, the inner part of the drive shaft can do that on these quite a bit. So Chris, Jack Tap had a little bit of play on the drive shafts. He doesn't think he can feel enough play. The boots are in good condition on the drive shafts, so it hasn't got dirt or grease come out of it um, or dirt got into it and wrecked the drive shafts. Doesn't seem there's enough play to give us this. The other thing that we've heard about is engine mounts. Now, what I notice is if I do this, I've got quite a bit of movement on that end on the, uh, on the gearbox end there's quite a bit of movement in that bush in there chris thinks i might be on something but he had to shoot so what i'm going to do is just nip the uh battery out and the battery tray underneath and see if i can get a look at at that um bushing there for the gearbox end it's a strange one i say because we've eliminated all the things electrically wise that you can monitor via electronics and they all seem to be happy so it must be something mechanical that's causing the vibration Chris says he feels it, felt it under his bum in his seat. He was quite adamant about that. Now, it could be that it's the rear engine bushing that's bad as well, but it doesn't seem as much play there as it does at this end over here. 
Would that be enough to give you vibration when you're running? I don't know. It's one of those annoying things again where you want to have just a broken part right in front of you and go, yep, that's what needs replacing. But instead, you've got to go for a process of elimination. It may end up playing a bit of part starts. You might have to replace that bush and run it again and see if the vibration is still there. Could be the drive shafts do have enough in them or one of the drive shafts have enough in it. So we might have to do the drive shafts. I'm not sure, but I've got to start replacing parts, unfortunately. It's a difficult one to tell with this vibration. Even, you know, even with Chris sort of twisting them and putting them back and forth, you can't be 100% with the drive shafts. So that's what we're going to do. Whip that battery out first and then um, have a look and see what we can find. I love it when the terminals have got the same colour on them. I always think that's just setting set people up for trouble, isn't it? So battery out, just got to remove this plastic tray here. Just see if there's any more. And this seems to be that one bolt by the looks of it. Let's put these tables, cables back nicely so they don't interfere with anything. Looks like the air box might be attached to that actually, looking at it. For some unknown reason, they decided to attach the air box to that battery tray. So I'll just double check what else is connected to it. Never played around one of these. V does before there seems to be a bolt down there as well for it. So we've got bolt down there. Uh, so the air box seems to be attached to that as well. So we'll get this air box off, I think, out of the way. And then we get to that. I've learnt to spend a little bit more time looking around these things because you assume you've uh, taken all the bolts out and start yanking at it and realise you've got one left. Right, I've loosened the airbox off enough to get to the bolts underneath. What a shitty design that is. It's just massively over complex as always. It just doesn't need to be that hard to get an airbox out. It's connected in about four different places. That's the problem with it. Anyway, so like I say, we'll um, whip this tray out now and that should give us a straight shot of looking at the top of that engine mount. One of the most essential tools in your toolkit is a pry bar. See how much movement we get. It does seem to be fairly freely moving. I'll give you that. I'm not wholly convinced. That's my problem. But it doesn't seem to need much of a pry to start to move about. It's been a while since I've uh, had a play with one, so I can't be 100% sure. Let's see if I can get a different angle on it. There we go, so that should probably be easier. That's how much movement we're getting with a bit of a pry. I think that needs too much of a pry to be the problem, to be honest. So I've pushed the uh, Golf in and left this stuff off. I've sent Chris a little video of the mount. I've leaned this stuff off so Chris can come and have a second opinion on it. And then he, you know, there's no point in me putting it all together and then we want to check for himself. The trouble with this kind of thing is unless you're doing it day in, day out, the level of play that a bushing should have is something only a really experienced person knows. I still can't tell with bushings. I've thought bushings are bad and the mechanics have told me they're all right. So I'll leave it to the professionals to have a look at that, but at least I've got everything out of the way, so a bit of time having a look at that. Because I wanted to get the taxi in, which predictably started <laughs> like an absolute champ again. Although that said, it did pop an engine management light. Now, I suspect that it's from all the little moves it's done because it's just been moved, you know, since I used it over the weekend, it's been moved there to there, there to there, there to there, all over the shop. I can't imagine it's anything serious. It's probably like an oxygen sensor or something because it, um, it basically starts up absolutely fine. So it'll be interesting, won't it, to see whether these garages that said they can't work on these, they don't have them in the system. Well, let's put that to the test because we've got engine management light on and we've been sent this. Uh, CR3001 reader by Launch. We should know the name Launch by now. Most people know the name Launch. They're quite well known in the OBD um, scanning side of the business. OBD, yeah. Um, they do the larger, more expensive diagnostics machines, the ones that you know run into thousands of pounds. But the interesting thing with this one, I know we've shown small code readers before, is they tell me this one actually gives live data. Even though it's only a small reader, it gives live data. Now, so we'll plug it in here and we'll see if this reader will read the engine management code on this taxi or not and see um, how difficult those garages are being just for the sake of it. So we're plugged in and the screen is uh, showing. Can we show you the screen? What's going on with that? 
It's going to be too bright for the camera. Uh, let me try and sort that out a second. So, oh, where are we? Let's get up here again. Ignition is on. Let's go for diagnose. Sorry, I've got green paint on my fingers because I was touching up that paint on the uh, MGB, covering it up. And we'll see if this gives us a code or not, won't we? Now, traditionally, these code readers only give you a code and you need to go and look up what it is. I don't know if this is going to tell us any more. But it has actually found a code in the ECU. So, second hurdle covered. Uh, how do we do this? Read codes. Arrays codes. Data stream freeze frame. So, it'll freeze frame it for you. Oxygen sensor test. That's got a lot more features than these normally have. What's it got on it? Onboard monitor. EVAP. Vehicle information. Well, there's certainly a lot more than there is on these normal little code readers I get. Uh, right. Generic code, P0402. Oh, it does actually say... Um, it does actually say what it's for. Exhaust gas recirculation flow excessive detected. So, air fuel mixture coming out of the exhaust by the looks of it. I think that's been triggered, like I say, by all these little, little start-up and move, you know, literally from one unit into the other. Let's... Um, Let's see if we can get some live data on the go as well. And look at that, it's giving us a live data stream on the load PCT. Which, you know, it'll only take me five minutes to look it up what that actually is. And let's see if I, uh, is it in park? It is in park, let's rev it up. Oh, there's my MAF sensor. I can see my MAF sensor's working, which is always a good one to know. If you've got an engine that's running poorly, See if your math sensor is actually active or not. Let's go back up again. See as I rev the data is changing there. It's got my RPM. Our post has just interrupted our recording with a couple of envelopes. These are people um, wanting the stickers sent out to them. I said if you send me self-addressed envelopes, I'll send you stickers back. So I'll get those sorted and get them in the post. So, C Reader 3001, I'm quite impressed with that. I'm quite impressed with that. As code readers go, you know, it takes it's, it makes that nice little balance between, um, you know, hobbyist and someone who wants to go a bit more in depth with the car. A bit better than the basic reader that doesn't tell you what the actual codes relate to. It gives you more information. And then that live stream data helps you tell whether things like oxygen sensors are down and that kind of thing, which is, to be honest, majority of cases it's normally relating to emissions or, or oxygen sensors so that probably strikes the right level of um of expertise in terms of how much you can do with it launch has been very generous and given chops garage viewers a 25 percent discount on this code reader so uh, it's for a limited time only so well worth grabbing one of these if you have been looking for a reader i'll put a link in the description down below the video description through to that offer what I'm also going to do is, as you know, we're currently raffling off the taxi. Just to avoid any confusion, the taxi will be one or the tech package that I've done. I've done the text package of stuff as well as an option if you don't want the taxi. The taxi will be one regardless of how many ticket sales happen. So, and 50% will go to the charity regardless of how many ticket sales happen. So even if I'm down um, and I haven't covered the cost of the taxi, the raffle will still go ahead and the charity will still get 50% regardless. Um, so, like I said, we offered for you to have the taxi or have the um, tech bundle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this uh, code reader I've got here as an additional prize in that competition. It'll be separate to the rest of it. I can't change the original bundle, but this will be an additional prize, so there'll be a second place prize as well. And if anybody, by the way, a few comments have said very generously that if they won it and they didn't want it, they'd want the um, a raffle to go again 100% in uh, in favour of the charity. I'm happy to organise that as well. If someone did win a taxi and just wanted it to roll it over again and just do a 100% charity donation um, raffle, I can organise that. The, the raffle company does take 10%, so they'd have to be covered on that, but we could do that if someone wanted to do that as well. So I'll put a link in the description down below also for the raffle for the taxi. Remember, it's just £1 per ticket with 50% of the proceeds, regardless of how many sales happen, 50% of the proceeds will go to the Grand Appeal. It puts families up in accommodation when they've got terminally ill children in the hospital, so fantastic cause. So yeah, I'll put a link to that down in the description below. But yeah, that light, we'll, we'll give, it a, you know, give it another try driving around a bit, but I'm pretty confident that light's just purely from having moved it short distance. Uh, a number of times in the last day or so.